Okay, so we reached uh, in the last module of this course, and uh, this module I kept as uh, this distribution system automation and smart grid. Okay, now uh, basically this module is to provide you some uh, uh, basic idea about uh, what is smart grid and how could we uh, convert an existing distribution network into a smart network what sort of uh, features should we uh, add and what are the, uh, this is most important basically, what are the research uh, going on, on this uh, uh, smart grid perspective of distribution networks. Okay. So, this uh, module is all about distribution system automation and smart grid. Okay. So, first of all, let me give you a basic definition of smart grid. In fact, uh, this is such a uh, upcoming area of research. I, I should not say upcoming, but uh, it is uh, started, the initiative started at least few years ago and it is uh, going on in full swing and the goal is to uh, convert our existing network to into a smart network. Okay. Uh, with the help of some advanced uh, technologies. Okay. Now, uh, the formal definition of smart grid one cannot find anywhere, although there are many works uh, related uh, to smart grid reported and in fact, there are many journals also on the smart grid uh, publishing papers. Okay. Now, uh, I whatever I will discuss in this module. Uh, the, the source of my uh, uh, discussion is the Gonen book. Okay. I mentioned at the bottom this uh, last chapter of this Gonen book, chapter 15. Okay. So, there you can find uh, some definitions. The first uh, few pages you will find some definition and I will quote this definition what to what here. Okay, I will quote this definition what to what. So, let us first uh, give the definition of smart grid. In fact, if what is electrical grid I already discussed at the very beginning of this course in my preamble lectures, uh, I discuss what is electrical grid and uh, what are the stakeholders of a typical electrical grid. I discuss starting from the generation uh, to transmission, then sub transmission system, then distribution system and finally, to the customer. So, starting from the generation to the customers, there are many uh, you know stakeholders okay. and uh, even customer is also a stakeholder for this process. Okay. So, I discussed what is typical electrical grid, what do we uh, need of this interconnected power system, those things uh, and those things I discussed and also I discussed uh, some brief overview of Indian power grid. Okay. Now, here this, this definition according to this Gonen book, uh, the smart grid is a process of modernization of the existing grid. It is not a replacement of the existing grid, but it is a modernized form of the e existing grid. Now, the question is what are the process of this modernization we have, those things I will be discussed. Now, how do we modernize this electrical grid? we need to install some intelligent electronic devices. Okay. In short, these are called ID, I will come to that, the basic definition I will to come to that. So, I, we can modernize the grid with uh, the installation of intelligent electronic devices. Okay. And these intelligent electronic devices include sensors, say electronic switches, smart meters, etcetera. Okay. So, these uh, intelligent electronic devices include these uh, sensors, uh, electronic switches and smart meters, uh, it is not exhaustive list, there are many others. And also another way of modernizing the grid is to by using advanced communication system okay, and data equalization system also with the help of this interactive software and real time control, so that we can optimize the operation of whole electrical system 
and we can make more efficient utilization of the grid assets. All this wording are very important. So, that is why I uh, quoted word to word from this Gonen book. All these wordings are very important. So, if you look at this de definition, you will get several uh, uh, new words in which we are not uh, somehow uh, familiar with so far with our discussion. In fact, uh, this conventional uh, field uh, engineers who work in power distribution system, they are also not familiar because these things we uh, have not used so far uh, in our uh, traditional distribution networks. So, that is why in fact, uh, whatever I discussed up to this uh, last module, those things somewhat uh, familiar, those things are somewhat familiar to the practicing engineers, but this is something which is uh, new. Okay? There are many things uh, which we did not bother being an electrical engineer. For example, uh, with the use of advanced communication, we can ma make some difference. Okay? So, being an electrical engineer, being a power engineer, we bother on uh, power flow, but we never uh, you know, uh, bother on uh, this information flow okay? and we uh, may not have much idea about the communication. Okay? So, those things uh, are the part of this modernization process of the existing system and those things are the essential stakeholders in uh, typical smart grid. Okay? So, in smart grid what are, who, are, who will be the additional stakeholders apart from the existing network because again and again I want to uh, emphasize the fact that the smart grid is not a completely new grid. It is a modernized form of our existing grid or uh, to be more precise I should say that smart grid uh, perspective of uh, power distribution networks uh, is a modernized form of power distribution networks with the help of many advanced technologies. And who which are the advanced technologies? You can see over here in intelligent electronic devices IEDs which include sensors, electronic switches, smart meters, etcetera. Also this advanced communication system data equation uh, system and software and real time control okay real time control okay so this makes an existing power distribution network uh, to a uh, modernized or so called smart uh, power distribution network so in brief a smart grid is existing electrical grid plus advanced communication plus information technology it IT stands for information technology, information technology. Now, you can uh, uh, remember my first uh, lecture in which I, I discussed the history of the development of power system. So, it was started uh, in uh, 1890s and it is uh, the development is still going on today. Uh, so, it is almost uh, you know that 130 years old technology and uh, it has uh, changed a lot since its inception. Okay? But we did not talk about that what could be the use of this advancement of this communication infrastructure, because communication infrastructure also was started with uh, basic telephone and now it is uh, in the era of uh, XG. Okay, 4G, 5G, etc. And there was a there is a tremendous development uh, in the communication system. So, uh, the one of the perspective of this uh, modernization of the grid is to utilize those uh, development or uh, those developed uh, this communication infrastructure in order to have a better operation of the existing power uh, network. Okay. So, uh, smart grid is basically existing grid, uh, electrical grid uh, plus the advanced communication infrastructure plus advanced information technology. Okay. All right. Now, uh, there are some properties, essential properties of the smart grid, which I would be uh, discussing. 
Okay. So, it is expected that smart grid will accommodate a wide variety of generation options. Okay. So, so far I discuss uh, in fact, the traditional power distribution networks are of passive networks okay. and uh, the source of power is only the existing grid that is uh, coming from the conventional uh, thermal power generating stations. Okay. And we assume that for passive distribution network, our uh, you know uh, starting point is the substation okay. and uh, this it is the substation who is basically feeding all these loads in a typical distribution network. But in smart grid environment, uh, it is expected that uh, a smart grid can accommodate wide variety of the generating option, which includes centralized generation, which we have the existing generation, distributed generation, so which is very important. So, distributed generation we already discussed in the last module and uh, of course, uh, it is uh, now, a, there is a part of a typical distribution network and also intermittent generation that is you know already discussed some sort of renewable energy resources like solar or solar photovoltaic or wind energy uh, system, uh, they are uh, basically uh, their generation is intermittent. Okay. So, those things uh, should be part of a typical uh, smart grid and also mobile uh, generation unit, which I have not talked about. Uh, it means that uh, you may have a mobile uh, energy resources, which in terms of a small battery or in terms of a small generation unit. Okay. A, a smart grid should provide customers uh, with the ability to interact uh, with the energy management system, which is not at all uh, they are in the present day passive distribution network. So, it is like a customer uh, is also acting as a passive entity. Okay. So, it does not have any role on uh, this power management system, only it is acted as a uh, consumer of the uh, energy and uh, according to the consumption, uh, a customer used to pay but uh, there is no such role of this uh, customer in energy management system till today uh, it, uh, according to its operation. But in, it is expected that in a smart grid environment, a customer would be also a part of the uh, energy management system. It also uh, participates, so customer participation is another important keyword uh, in a, a typical smart grid environment. Okay. So, that uh, this, uh, uh, this customer can adjust their energy usage according to this requirement of the grid and it can reduce their energy cost. Okay. Also, a smart grid should also have a self-filling system. It is another area of research nowadays, self-filling system. So, it should be resilient to uh, external disturbances or external uh, attack, which includes uh, many entities, uh, which includes uh, cyber physical attack as well. Okay. So, uh, so if it forces any forthcoming failures, technical failures, it should have an, uh, should take necessary corrective actions to avoid uh, this, this any sort of outages. Okay. So, this will improve essentially the reliability of the network. Okay. So, a smart grid also use information technology okay, uh, to optimize the employment of the capital asset while minimizing the operational and maintenance cost. Okay. But you look at this uh, the last bullet point, which I have intentionally marked with red color font. Uh, it says that the smart grid should not be seen as the replacement of the present electrical power grid, but a complement to it, okay, which is very important. It is not a replacement, it is an, it's a modernized form of this existing grid. So, uh, in fact, a smart grid can also coexist with the present electrical power grid, adding to its capabilities, functionalities and capacities by means of evolutionary path. Okay. Now, we have some definitions, some typical definitions of typical components of smart grid. 
Okay, and this definition, as I said, I took from this uh, Turan Gonen books, chapter 15, what what, okay, uh, and also I will discuss what they are actually. So, first definition is intelligent electronic device ID, which I will be using many times while discussing uh, many of the smart grid initiative or many of the smart grid projects. Okay. So, what is intelligent electronic device or ID? Uh, any device incorporating one or more processors with it, so that it can receive or send data and also it can control uh, from or to an external source. So, any device which have uh, a processor to receive or send data and to have a controllability is called as uh, intelligent electronic device and examples are electronic meter or smart meters. Uh, in fact, I will talk about in bit detail on smart meters later part of this uh, module and also digital relays and controllers. So, an intelligent electronic device should be capable of uh, sending and receiving data or in brief it can communicate with it can uh, capable of communicating with this other uh, devices and it can have control ability. Okay. The next definition is remote terminal unit RTU. Uh, it is an entire complement of devices, functional modules and assemblies that are electronically interconnected to affect the remote station supervisory functions. So, this remote terminal units are usually located in the uh, remotely operated station or remotely operated devices. Okay. So, this equipment includes the interface with the communication channel. So, there are some of the substations, small substations or some of the uh, part of the networks which are remotely operated, okay. so which are part of this remote terminal unit. The second, uh, I mean third definition which is very important and it is also an important building block of a smart uh, grid initiative of power distribution systems that is substation automation or in acronym is SA, substation automation. In fact, uh, I will also discuss uh, this uh, particular entity in more detail in the latter part of this lecture. So, what is substation automation? So, deployment of a substation and feeder operating function and applications ranging from supervisory control and data acquisition. So, this is another you know uh, keywords SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition system uh, which is used uh, for various purposes in a typical uh, distribution substation if you visit and also uh, it, it is uh, there is another important aspect that is integrated volt for control this is another keyword. So, this CADA IVV VC I will uh, discuss in more detail in the latter part of the lecture, but these are the part of this uh, part of the process of substation or automation. So, a substation uh, automation needs the supervisory control data acquisition system, also it needs integrated volvar control. Okay. So, that it can optimize the management of capital asset and enhance the operation and maintenance efficiencies with minimum minimal human intervention. Okay. So, in fact automation stands for minimal human intervention that one can understand. Okay. Next definition is data concentrator. So, as we are talking about in fact uh, you know this uh, smart grid it is a uh, such a uh, you know uh, power distribution network where uh, there are bidirectional flows of uh, power or energy and information, okay, which one should understand very clearly. So, uh, in fact, the traditional distribution network, passive distribution network, you have seen that uh, power or energy flows unidirectionally, uh, because uh, most of our distribution networks are operated uh, uh, as radial. So, power flow becomes unidirectional. Okay. But, with the inception of distributed generation in it, uh, we no longer have this unidirectional flow of power. So, we have 
bidirectional flow of power. Now, with the use of this smart grid initiative, uh, we will have uh, bidirectional flow of not only power on energy, but also information, because we have many communication uh, systems uh, by using which we can receive and send various types of data. Now, what types of data we will be in intending to uh, send or receive those things I will be discuss later part of this lecture. Okay. So, data concentrator is basically designed uh, for this uh, IEDs, uh, intelligent electronic devices and also have limited capability for hardware I O. Okay. Now, since we have uh, we are talking about this uh, communication system, so we will be having some protocol communication protocol and there is a distributed network protocol DNP, uh, which is, uh, is definition is non proprietary communication protocol that is designed to optimize the transmission of data acquisition information and control commands from one computer to another computer. Then uh, next uh, definition is demand response, which is somewhat known to you, uh, because I discussed demand response uh, in, in uh, the module 1, uh, last part of this module 1 to be more precise, uh, where I, I discussed various types of demand response activities. Okay. So, basically it defines as the consumer's behavioral change to the changing rates. Okay and uh, it is only possible if you have a time varying energy pricing. So, then the consumers would be interested to change its consumption process uh, in view of this energy usage okay? and thereby you can make, uh, you can have several of uh, you know program successful which include uh, peak saving which includes value filling etcetera. Okay? So, this demand response is already taught. Now, let me talk about some characteristics, instrument characteristics of smart, typical smart grid. Okay. So, a smart grid is implied to uh, a, a grid with brain, a grid with brain, because uh, it is automated, because we have several advanced, uh, we use several advanced communication and information technologies. Okay. So, it is a modernized grid that enables bidirectional flows of energy as well as uh, uh, data. So, energy as well as and data one should do and data. Okay. So, this is very important. So, a smart grid uh, is a uh, power grid where you have bidirectional flow of power or energy uh, and data. Okay. So, it uses uh, two way communication or bidirectional communication and control abilities that will lead to a new functionalities and application. So, uh, communication and control ability are the inherent part of a smart grid initiative. Okay. So, smart grid uh, will permit two way flow of both if electricity and information, which I was talk trying to uh, trying to emphasize. Okay, which I am, uh, which is the main message that one should understand. So, a smart grid, a typical smart grid means it enables the bidirectional flow of uh, power and data or information. Now, what are the attributions we have for a, in a good smart grid? It should be absolute reliability, it should be absolute reliable. So, absolute reliability of the supply which we have already talked about. So, by with this I am a smart grid initiative, the goal is to have uh, almost 100 percent reliability, okay? more than 99.99 percent reliability of power uh, or reliability or uh, less than 0.01 percent of uh, power interruption. Okay? Also, optimal use of uh, several types of generation, uh, which may be conventional generation, distributed generation, controllable or dispatchable consumers load. So, these are already discussed. Minimal environmental impact of electricity production and delivery. This is possible if you have uh, more sort of uh, renewable energy generation units, such as solar photovoltaic or 
wind energy or other type of renewable energy net assistance into an your network. And also uh, higher efficiency, resiliency which is very important uh, against any sort of physical or cyber attacks. Okay. Also it should be resilient to natural climate is like hurricanes, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis etcetera. So, assuming optimal power quality uh, similar to this reliability one should expect a good quality of power. So, that needs to be provided in a smart grid initiative and also monitoring all critical components of power system to enable automated maintenance and outage prevents. Okay. Now, what are the needs of this uh, smart grid? Some of the needs are well known that uh, we, we basically know that centralized power generation units uses conventional type of fuels like coal and gases which we are trying to reduce okay? and they are also having lower efficiency, lower energy efficiency. Okay? So, and, but they are responsible for uh, most of the greenhouse gas emission carbon dioxide emission. So, we need to uh, cut short okay? as well as we have to uh, go for other forms of energy. So, that um, uh, this energy demand can be fulfilled because there are two things uh, two contradictory things here. One is uh, customers demand uh, is increasing uh, year by year. So, one utility has always a challenge to meet the increased demand with this available generation. Another part is we have to cut short this con because till today we mostly rely on this conventional type of generation. So, it is also a challenge to uh, reduce such kind of generation uh, by integrating more sort of renewable energy resources. Okay. Also controllable generation and predictable load. Controllable generation is of course, a challengeable thing because again renewable energy we are talking about their generation is not controllable. Okay. So, how to uh, utilize them uh, in a better way that is also a factor and uh, limited automation and situational awareness was uh, there so far in the existing power grid and lack of customer side data to manage and reduce energy losses and another important things which is not mentioned over here that is. Uh, to, to increase the customer participation in the power management process. Okay. So, this is another need of uh, developing the smart grid. Now, uh, this functions of smart grid according to this 2009 smart grid report of US Department of Energy, a smart grid should have following functions. One is optimizing asset utilization and operating efficiency, providing power quality for the range of the needs, accommodate all type of generation and storage options, enable informed participation of the customers which I was talking about in my last slide okay? and to operate resiliently to disturbances, attack and natural disaster. So, these are the things one need to understand, these are the functionalities uh, the smart grid should have okay? or these are the functionalities expected from a typical smart. Now, here we will compare the, the features of the smart grid and existing grid. Okay. So, existing grid it is if you call it as a its operation as electromechanical, then a smart grid operation should be fully digital. Okay. Fully digital. So, in existing grid we have one way communication. Okay. Sometimes uh, there is no communication at all, but in smart grid there should have a bidirectional communication or two way communication. Okay. An existing grid mostly depends upon the centralized generation of the conventional type of the generation systems like coal fired energy generation system or uh, natural gas fired energy generation system. But uh, smart grid should have more sort of distributed generation, which mostly focused on renewable energy generation system like uh, solar photovoltaic or wind. So, existing grid operates as a hierarchical process. I also discussed this in very detail starting from the generation, then transmission, then sub transmission, then uh, primary distribution and then it reaches to the distributed uh, distribution transformer and finally, it reaches to the 
customer via distribution uh, via secondary distribution network. But uh, the smart grid itself is a act as a uh, self uh, sufficient network. Okay. So, in the hierarchical system you can see uh, the power is fed from one hierarchical uh, part to another hierarchical part from starting from the generation to transmission and then transmission to sub transmission. But here with the smart grid initiative since a typical distribution network will have uh, more sort of uh, distributed energy resources they did not operate it as a hierarchical process. Okay. So, in existing grid we have few sensors. Uh, and in particularly in distribution networks, we have uh, very, very few sensors, very, very few, in fact, negligibly small amount of sensors. But a smart grid needs sensors throughout, so that whole operation should be observable. So, existing grid, if you call it as a blind and smart grid should be self monitoring, that feature should have been there. If existing grid needs manual restorations due to a fault or a any sort of uh, disturbances, then uh, ex smart grid should have a self-healing capability. So, if existing uh, grid uh, suffers from uh, failures and blackouts, smart grid should have islanding process. This islanding is something like we, when we have a self-sufficient distribution generation or distributed generation uh, based distribution network, it can isolate from the grid if there is a major grid disturbance. Okay. And it can operate to this local load, so that load will never or customer will never uh, get affected uh, from this uh, any sort of grid disturbances. Okay. So, existing grid is having old fashioned customer uh, metering, but smart grid should have intelligent customer metering. In fact, uh, meters are to be replaced and this process has been initiated. So, Existing grid is having manual checking or testing, smart grid is having remote checking. Uh, existing grid is having limited control capabilities, whereas smart grid is have fully control capabilities. And also uh, few customer choices and many, uh, in fact, uh, existing grid we do not have much choices as being a customer, but in uh, smart grid we have uh, many choices. Okay. That is what our expectation of this smart grid initiative. Okay. So, these are the building blocks of a typical uh, you know smart grid and I will be discussing this all these blocks in one by one in detail in more detail. Uh, so, this D A stands for distribution automation. Okay. Uh, this D M S stands for distribution management system. Then meter data or automated metering infrastructure which I will be discussing uh, smart meters and uh, this meter data management system those I will be uh, discussing and this SA stands for substation automation, substation automation which I will be again uh, discuss in a bit detail um, in the next part of this lecture. Okay. So, these are the typical building blocks of a smart grid system. Uh, which include distribution automation, substation automation, uh, distribution uh, management system. Distribution management system is having multiple functionalities, which I will be discussing, uh, okay. and uh, automated metering infrastructure. So, these are the some of the fundamental fund, uh, building blocks, and it is uh, you know this whole operation uh, is broken uh, into into. Uh, some four different uh, parts. One is circuit topology, what sort of advancement we require in circuit topology. We need to have advanced feeder design, substation design. Also, what sort of other smart grid functions we require? One is inclusion of IT infrastructure, information technology infrastructure, another is telecommunication infrastructure. Under this un, uh, IT infrastructure, we have the use of geographical information system, uh, we have the use of enterprise service bus, we have the use of customer relationship management. Under uh, this uh, communication infrastructure, we have different types of this communication which is wide area network, local area network uh, and many others. Okay. So, these are the different building blocks of a typical 
smart grid. Okay. And some of these blocks I will be discussed in more detail in the next part of this lecture. Okay. So, I will stop today at this point and I will discuss in more detail in the next part of the lecture. Thank you. Thank you.